So we got a set of some JFETs here, some 2N5457s, and we're going to match them up and see if we can get something that we can make a phaser out of. So let's uh, take this little breadboard layout we got right here. We'll go over that in a moment as to what it's exactly doing, but suffice it to say what we're going to look for is we're providing it a 9-volt feed, and we're going to put the JFETs in here, and then we're going to see a voltage value that we're going to measure and we're going to try to match. So let's see. 0 0.610. 0 0.610. All right, that's you. Zero point three nine zero. Zero point seven eight zero. Zero five nine one. 0 0.591 all right so if we were to use let's see if we can kind of zoom the camera in on that a bit if we were to use those values for those four JFETs it's pretty wild and varied uh, yeah, you, you want to try to keep like the whole range, nothing more than 5% difference. So that's going to be a little bit odd. That's going to be an unmatched set. But I'll tell you what, we're going to plug that into a phaser and just uh, find out what that's going to sound like if you were to put an unmatched set in there. But uh, let's continue here and see if we can't find something that we can use a little better. Let's try these. One, two, four, one. One, two, five, five. That's pretty close on those two. One three flat, one point three volts flat. Trying not to mess the order up here. I think we got ourselves a good set all of a sudden. Dang, that's pretty good. One point two five two. 251, 252, we'll call it 252. 1.252. Okay, yeah. Um, I think I need to go out and buy me a lottery ticket because uh, you don't usually just pull JFETs out in order like that. Um, that's pretty dang close. So what I would say, yeah, let's uh, see if we can look back at them values here. Yeah, so 1.241, 1.255, 1.300, 1.1.2.52, that's going to make a match set. So yeah, let's uh, put those into a phaser and let's hear what that sounds like. Uh, we're also going to put the unmatched set 2 in there and hear what that sounds like as well, just so you guys get an audio sample of that. All right, let's check that out. Before we have a listen, let's take a look at my layout for my breadboard that I use to measure those voltages with my multimeter. This just uses a couple of components. We got a 9 volt power supply. Uh, we have a dual op amp. In this case, I used a TL072. We have three 10K resistors. We have a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And then, of course, the JFETs themselves that we're measuring. And, oh, obviously, a bunch of wire. So, this is my basic layout. 
but let's take a look at the schematic and see what's really going on. The schematic and design for this was made back in the late 90s by R.G. Keen and can be found on his GeoFX site. We'll have a link in the description below if you wish to take a look at his stuff there. Anyways, when trying to use a JFET as a variable resistor, which is what we do in phasers, we quickly find that the JFET characteristics, especially when compared to a bipolar transistor, are way all over the place. Unfortunately, this is just part of the JFET manufacturing process and can't really be avoided. Um, the one characteristic we're going to be focusing on here is the gate source cutoff voltage. We know that a JFET has its minimum resistance when its VGS is zero. We know that a JFET goes to a maximum resistance of almost infinity when the device is cut off. The ranges of VGS cutoff found in the data sheets of that JFET relate to these ranges of control voltages we have to put on the JFET's uh, gate right here to get them to be a variable resistor between here. Somewhere between RDS on, usually a few hundred ohms, and an open circuit. We usually want to put some predictable control voltage on this gate pin right here to get that resistance to vary. The variation of these VGS values are too large to work with typically because of the inconsistency of JFETs, so we need to find a way to select JFETs with the least amount of variation. That's what this whole JFET matching circuit does. First we start off with a 9 volt supply, then we take a voltage divider of two 10K resistors and make a 4.5 volt voltage reference. We also have a decoupling capacitor here just to keep things stable. Then we take that JFET that's in question and another 10K resistor and we put it here with this op amp. Now what this op amp is going to do is it's going to compare the voltage that's coming from in here, the 4.5 volt reference, and the voltage divider that's trying to be made here. And remember, op amps will do whatever it takes to make the inverting and non-inverting pins look the same. So it's going to provide voltage at this gate pin until this uh, 2N5457 starts acting like a 10K resistor, creating a voltage divider, which is going to match this 4.5 volts. This is actually what we're measuring with the multimeter, is we're trying to see how much output is being made here in volts to get this 4.5 volt reference made. A phaser needs JFETs that are all in the same resistor range, the whole not fully on or fully off thing, and that needs to all happen at the same time. With the unmatched set, as your low frequency oscillator and your phaser ran, it turns the JFETs on or fully off at different times, and you're not going to get really good phasing because of that. Anyways, enough theory, let's actually hear what this sounds like. All right, let's get a sample of our clean sound. All right, now let's get a sample of the match set at nine o'clock. Let's change the setting up to noon. All right, and now let's crank it all the way up to a nine, or sorry, a three. Set your faces on force three to kill. All right, and that's what a match set would sound like. Okay, and now let's get uh, the bad set in, and we'll set the uh, speed here to, to uh, nine o'clock. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bump it up to noon. And 
And let's see how that sounds with the bad set. All right, and let's uh, blast the speed up to about three o'clock. So this is three o'clock settings with the bad set. All right, so that's what a phaser in a phase 90 type configuration is going to sound like if it's got unmatched JFETs. So now listening to it, it wasn't actually as bad as I was expecting. I was expecting a lot worse by not having the match set, but as you can see, it still kind of works. Now, what really to look for in these sounds is the turnaround. That's basically where the matching comes into play. That is to say, where uh, all the JFETs continue to change the drain source resistance at the top and the bottom of the sweep, rather than, like for example, three continuing to change, and then one of them reaching its maximum or minimum before the other ones do, and so on and so forth. But in phase 90s, that's not as big of a problem. Basically, the idea was, is back then, they didn't have these like four and five and six knob phasers that existed. And basically, all you had was that speed control, and that's it. So they picked a feedback amount and a sweep width amount that would work well enough for all the speed settings that work with their production units. And that can be heard in that sample clip that you just heard right there. Um, basically, where poor matching is concerned, you can compensate a lot of that by reducing that sweep width and adjusting the bias, which every time I changed out the JFETs, I did have to readjust the bias trim pot that's on there. Basically, if you're looking at that uh, really large, like 3.9, 3.3, 4 mega ohm resistor that goes in that low frequency oscillator for your phaser, uh, so long as you reduce the uh, resistance on that, then it'll kind of cover up some of the mistakes of having not so matched JFETs. But there you go. So I hope you all learned something here. If you guys like these kind of videos, press subscribe and press like. If you want us to do more of these videos, just comment below and let us know. If you want to support us, just go to our store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and just buy from the store. That'll support us greatly, especially in these times of this whole COVID thing. So uh, until the next video, cheers.